This is the homepage of an ebook called Gems and Jewels, published by Touch Press. It's based on a collection of incredibly shiny and beautiful objects in the Granger Hall of Gems at the Field Museum in Chicago. Uh, as you can see, these things are really quite attractive, and let's start by looking at one of my favorites, gold. If you've seen any of Touch Press's previous products, notably our first one, The Elements, you probably won't be surprised to know that these things can all be rotated. Um, so you can see the other side of everything, which you probably can't do in the actual museum. But we go quite a bit beyond what The Elements was able to do. For example, if you take one of these things, you can not only rotate it, you can also pinch it bigger, and you can see fantastic detail on this object. Put it back again. The photo captions are now two-sided, so we see here a description of the object, and then if you flip it, you'll see uh, more technical details about the object. Some objects actually don't make a lot of sense to rotate. For example, this stamped gold necklace that's about 2,500 years old. It wouldn't really make sense to rotate it, so instead we just let you zoom it. Um, but not just a little bit, we let you really zoom it. You can see incredible detail at the individual tool marks on each of these faces. The whole image is about 30,000 pixels wide. Let's go back to the home page. There's two ways of diving into the content in this book. You can either start from one of the sort of popular gem types, things like sapphire, ruby, gold, diamond, uh, or you can go to the complete hierarchical classification of all the hundred or so gem types that are described in here, starting with the division between inorganic and organic. Let's pick one of my favorites, quartz. This is a sort of a menu page. There's actually three categories of quartz that are described in this book. Now, before we go and look at a specific one, though, I want to show you one of my favorite features, which is the life size button. You hold this down, everything suddenly goes to its actual physical size, which we can do because we know exactly how big an iPad screen is, and we know exactly how big each object is. Pick amethyst here. Uh, so again, we have a whole bunch of beautiful things you can rotate. This particular crystal in the corner here is quite large, so the life size button does something fairly dramatic here. Um, but this isn't just a book of pretty objects. Um, if you look at the text up in the corner here, if you touch it, you'll see this expands out to be uh, quite an in-depth discussion about amethyst. Uh, this is text written by Lance Grand, who's the curator of this exhibit and the vice president of the Field Museum. So it's very authoritative, very interesting, uh, and, and complete text about gems and gemstones and the minerals that they come from. You see it's also heavily cross-linked. There's links to specific figures or to other gem types. Let's go to diamond. So, of course, not surprisingly, diamond is where uh, the most sparkliest of all the things live. Again, life size is a fun button. Kind of gives you a feeling for, yeah, these are, these are really rings. Uh, let's look at colorless diamonds. Here you see, uh, well, it's a big necklace and some really tiny little stones, but even though they're tiny, you can, you can still rotate them. You can still, still see a lot of detail in them. This page is one of the most remarkable objects in the whole museum, a pendant called Cumulus, designed by Lester Lampert. You can rotate it, of course. You can double tap it to bring it up full size. As with all the other objects, you can zoom it, so we can see in detail all these individual diamonds. I believe that one is an 8 carat diamond on the top. Um, you can actually rotate it in this zoomed form, but because of file size limitations, we only give you four views at this super high resolution. But you can, for example, see the back. You see how all these diamonds are mounted, which is something you can't see in the actual museum. Um, so you can choose between four views at very high resolution or smooth rotation at a more reasonable size. You can even go to a true stereo 3D view. Here, if you have uh, 3D glasses or if you can free view these things, this, this object will now pop off the screen in, in, in real 3D. In 3D, 3D. Returning to the home page here, one thing that every Touch Press product must have is a theme song. And we really thought long and hard about what the best theme song for such an elegant collection of objects would be. 
and I'm very pleased to report that we found and were able to license the perfect a one. A kiss of the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. That's right, we have Marilyn Monroe herself singing Diamonds Are a Girl's Breast Friend. And you can leave that song playing while you explore the rest of the app. Let's look at another interesting feature here. If you touch the Exhibit button, what you see here is a map of the actual Granger Hall of Gems in the actual Field Museum. Uh, and if you want to see anything more about uh, one of these particular display cases, you can touch it. And you now get a view of the display case with sort of oversized objects superimposed on it. And if you want to look up more detail about one of those, you just touch it. And now you see this object enlarged. Uh, actually, it's a question. Is it enlarged? Is it smaller? Again, the life size button answers that question. In this case, one of them is quite a bit bigger than it normally would be. And you can see all kinds of detail here uh, that uh, is, generally speaking, not visible in the actual museum. Now let's look at the complete categorization. If we go up to the inorganic category here, we'll see that there's actually a lot more to it than just these uh, few popular gem types that are showcased on the home page. For example, let's look at feldspar. Not something you may typically think of as a gemstone. So there's three major categories. We look at this uh, albite anorthite feldspar. We see there's three subcategories of that. My favorite is labradorite. And the reason it's my favorite is because it has this amazing object on it here. You notice all these the stripes here, very sort of iridescent stripes. It turns out these are visible only from one very particular angle. If we rotate this thing even a few degrees to either side, they go away. And this is something that it's almost impossible to communicate uh, in, it's certainly not in print, even a video, even what you're seeing right now is really not the right way of experiencing it. You have to have it in your, under your own control so you can get a feeling for how this optical phenomenon works. And that's something you get, of course, in the interactive form of this book. Well, I've tried to give you an overview of all the different things you can find in this book beautiful pictures, hundreds of objects, authoritative text. If you like it, it's available right now in the App Store. Search for Gems and Jewels or look up the uh, TouchPress products.